After having been working on action films for a long time, now I often think this way. I've made the same action before. My colleagues and I would say, we already did this in that film. It's not fun to make a film when you get stuck in a rut. I tried to do something completely different for Hydra. When I have complete freedom of creativity, I try to do something experimental that is not following the existing format itself. This is an interview with Kensuke Sonomura. Kensuke is a Japanese action designer and director known for his films Hydra, Baby Assassins, and Bad City. We talk about his stunt training under Yasuaki Kurata, and he tells us the secrets behind his very unique and very dangerous looking action style. Okay, so first, I just wanted to say thank you, uh, Kensuke, for uh, agreeing to talk, and, uh, and I really appreciate your time, so thank you. Thank you. So my first question is, uh, can you just talk about your childhood and your cultural influences growing up? I started karate when I was six years old. But I trained karate only for six years while I was in elementary school. When I was a kid, Hong Kong movies were often aired on TV. I was always imitating the movies from Jackie Chan's films and other Hong Kong films. This is how I started. Did you, uh, when you were taking martial arts, did those films inspire your martial arts training too? I used to imitate the training scenes from the old Jackie Chan movies. I used playground equipment to imitate Jackie's training. When you were watching these Jackie Chan films, what was it that you liked about the action? As a kid, I was really attracted to the comedic elements of it and the fact that you can make people laugh with your movements. Can you talk about your karate style that you were studying and how that might have affected how you grew as an action designer too? I was practicing a traditional karate which gives more weight to kata competitions and things like that. What I learned from karate is that it's helpful to express silhouette and the focus of power at the end of movement. Uh, can you tell us about how you got into doing stunts? When I was 16 years old, I was reading a magazine and found an advertisement for a stunt school called Karada Action Club. They were recruiting trainees, and I applied immediately. Can you talk about what uh, what was the training style at the Karate Action School? First of all, we all learned how to do breakfalls. We kept practicing just breakfalls. We also kept practicing karate strikes and kicks and things like that because Karate Sensei has a karate background. This is how the training started. From there, we started training reactions, acrobatics, flips, and things like that.
And how did he teach fight choreography when you have two people fighting or one versus two, for example? Karada Sensei taught me a lot of different types of things. But in the beginning, we only worked on a really basic one on one fight. It goes something like you punch, then I block and hit back. Instead of moving on to a more complex fight, we were told to make the simple fight look so good that the audience would love to pay just to watch that. Are there any other notable action designers or fight choreographers who were in your class at that time? Though there are not many in my school year, I think there are many from previous years. Is Koichi Sakamoto one of those? Yes, he is my senior. But we didn't train in the same time period. I joined long after Sakamoto-san had quit. I was there for only two years. So, the other major action school in Japan uh, is the, was the Japan Action Club, now known as Japan Action Enterprise. Uh, what was the relationship like be between Karata-san's school and Japan Action Club? Many of the people who joined Karata Action Club liked Hong Kong movies. I have an impression that people who went to Japan Action Club were those who liked Power Ranger movies and other tokusatsu stuff. Because they were shooting those types of films a lot. What is the, because, because he was, you know, Kensuke, you, you were talking about silhouettes in karate. Could you describe the difference in visual style of karate's action style and Japan Action Club action style? I trained only at Karata Action Club, so all I can do is guess. In Karata Action Club, I think expressing the impact and the power of each strike is considered to be important. Apparently, in Japan Action Club, people trained in various disciplines, such as Shalinji Kempo. And Japanese sword for historical dramas and many other disciplines thoroughly to improve general skills. That is my impression of training at Japan Action Club. As you started doing action, you started, uh, you started out doing stunts, stunt doubling. It looks like the first time that you were doing action design was uh, with Ryuhei Kitamura, uh, can you describe how you started out designing action in these in your first films? What was your style back then? The first film I worked on with Kitamura-san did not have many action scenes. The action part was secondary to the drama. The action was not the main focus. So I tried to make the action scenes as unobtrusive to the main plot of the film as possible. As you continued working, um, you worked on, so you worked on Devil May Cry 4, 
Metal Gear Solid 4, you started working on video games as well. Can you describe uh, what the action design process is when working on a Japanese video game? And if I could ask one, just a quick, one quick follow-up question is, did you design action for the gameplay or the cinematic movie scenes or both? It was movie scenes that would go in between games, not game motions. Uh, did you work very closely with the director in designing the action scenes, or did the director give you more control? For Devil May Cry, the director of the movie scenes was Shimamura-san from Uden. So I basically designed the movements according to his intentions. For Metal Gear Solid, the director had concrete ideas. Director Kojima had many ideas he wanted to do, so I designed the action in line with his ideas. Did um, Shimamura-san give you more control than Kojima? I mean, is what what was the difference between the two directors' uh, style, or the difference between how the directors worked with you? That's right. Shimamura-san let me come up with ideas relatively freely and adopted my ideas. In Kojima-san's case, I responded to the ideas he wanted to implement. When you were designing the action, did you also design the camera placement and the editing? for the scenes as well. For games I direct, I specify the editing and camera angles. Although it depends on how I get involved in a project. When I simply come in as an action coordinator, I leave the post-production to a person in charge. Did Karata-san also teach filmmaking as part of the action design process? No, he didn't. Basically, we mainly practiced physical movements. I learned how to shoot on my own. Oh, okay, that's very interesting. Um, because when I when I watch the karate action style, there it tends to. This is my my perception, is that the karate uh, action club style works. It's like the Hong Kong style in that it works better for camera. Whereas the Japan Action Club style, the camera tends to be further back, wider angles, and the action tends to just play on a wide for the camera angle. Um, that's why I asked about, you know, filmmaking as an emphasis at the Karate Action School. Is that an accurate uh, difference between the two styles? Uh Again, I think many people from Karate Action Club probably liked Hong Kong movies, including myself. We learned how to shoot Hong Kong style on our own and tried the techniques out on independent films. So that's probably why you see Hong Kong style of action in our films. Do you think that the Japan Action Club style of movement would work well in indie action films? Or is the Japan Action Club style more suited for big productions in Japan? I think by now, things have changed a lot since then. It's a traditional way of filming in Japan. 
、そ,それをあのそ,その中で、まあ、どう動くかっていう。And I think Japan Action Club choreographed the action scenes following that tradition. Traditionally, the actions were designed afterwards based on the predetermined camera positions. But we choreographed the movements first. But we choreographed the movements first. And then we put the camera in the best position to make the fight look good. And we keep changing the camera blocking to make the fight more interesting. As we shoot, we keep changing things as we go. That's how we shoot now. There are pros and cons in both styles. It is best to be able to use both styles to create something interesting. So, you, you've done some films that are pretty well known in the States, like Hard Revenge Millie,、uh, we, uh, and we know about Gantz also.、Uh, there's some,、uh, there are some films that have extreme violence, and it's almost funny violence sometimes.、Uh, was, the, it, was violence part of your choreography or? You know, when you do these films with extreme violence, is that the director's idea? What is your role when designing that kind of violence? The films you just mentioned were made more than 10 or 15 years ago. At the time, low budget films with such cruelty were very popular. I was also told that depictions of big blood spurting out and similar expressions would sell the films better overseas. That was absolutely not my personal intention. Many projects started with a simple idea, such as showing a large amount of blood or making heads fly off. When you did your games, Devil May Cry, for example, did you work with American performers as well, or was it only with Japanese performers? And if you did work with Americans, was it any different designing action for them compared to designing action for Japanese performers? For Devil May Cry, a foreign crew came to Japan. They only worked on a small action scene that served as a transition from drama to action. And the rest of the action scenes were all done by the Japanese team. I often work with people from overseas on action scenes. And I think the language barrier is the biggest problem. There are nuances that can't be conveyed by movements alone. Some words can't be translated well in the other languages. For example, in Japanese, there is a word merihari. I didn't know how to translate merihari into English. When I work with foreign staff, I start by making them understand the nuance of these kind of words. Yeah, 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 yeah. The merihari is that, so you're going from loose to tight? Is that how I understand it? The word merihari has many uses. For example, to make the last strike look strong, the three preceding strikes should be compact. To convey this, you just say merihari in Japanese. In foreign languages, different words would probably be used depending on the situation. Can you give a real world martial art application or example of Medihari? Do you mean other than film? 
Yeah, because my, what I'm trying to understand is, is there is there a traditional origin of Medihari that might come from martial arts culture, for example? I think the word probably originated from kabuki theatre. When I translated it into English, the word that seemed to fit best was contrast. It's like making one side stand out while making the other side less noticeable. Totally, totally makes sense. This it's it's really interesting. There's a um I, I won't go into it too much, but for us in American style action. Uh, what we will do is we will do a big anticipation and then that it sort of builds up for the big move afterwards. So it's kind of like the it's it's almost like we are I'm trying to I'm trying to apply it to American style action. Perhaps the Japanese language itself is pretty crisp. It's a language without much flow. I think it's easy for Japanese people to accept angular language. Japanese is a very crisp language. It is different from a language that is spoken in a smooth, flowing manner. So maybe when you hear Chinese, you hear a flow in it. For us, it sounds like a flow of sounds. Mandarin and Cantonese sound different. I think Cantonese is more lively. Perhaps it is something to do with the language culture. I think Japanese people have a mentality of accepting things that have a certain medihari in them. Um, can I uh, can I give my example of when I did Japanese style action because I think I I think I understand the language part. First, I did God of War, and the moves were very big, big anticipation, big hit, big recovery, a lot of character. And then they had me do Demon Souls, a Japanese game. And my first time going in there, I did a move like that, and they said, "No, no, no, you need to do it much differently. It's a Japanese game." And they wanted me to do smaller anticipation. Uh, a smaller, smaller, smaller moves, and then a big ending. So instead of like this, it was like this. A longer pose at the end. Yes, that's Merihari, probably. Thank you for explaining it. This is very, this is very helpful. Can we talk about um, when you did Tekken Blood Vengeance? How did you take the characters and design action for the characters? Tekken itself has been around for many years. I think each character has its own fans. Therefore, if a character's movements deviate from the existing image of the character, many people would probably complain about it. For this reason, I made characters' movements by asking if a certain technique is suitable for each character each time on the set. I'll, I'll say this. I, the, the last fight in Tekken Blood Vengeance, I think, is one of the best animated action scenes of all time still oh. martial arts wise <laughs> thank you and did you have any uh any input with the filmmaking on that one i wasn't influenced by other films at the time but there is one part in the opening scene where nina and anna fight and the way they dodge in that scene was inspired by Donnie Yen's Ip Man. Um, what was your goal with the action design for these more independent, smaller martial art films? 
Basically, I make films on a low budget, or rather, with really only the minimum amount of money. I was an action director, not a director for Bushido Man. After this film, when I direct, I always think of it this way. I'm an action director, not a director. My main job is still to work as an action director on other people's films. And then when I have something I want to express, I experiment with low-budget films. <laughs> Directing a film is like a hobby to me. Was there, any, uh, was there any change in your action design style uh, from when you started until you started doing films around this time period, like Bushido Man? Uh, because there's a lot more intricacy in the choreography than in uh, earlier films, especially Hydra, um, Baby Assassins. Your style is getting more intricate. Are there new Are there new influences that you are drawing from? After having been working on action films for a long time, now I often think this way. I've made the same action before. My colleagues and I would say. We already did this in that film. It's not fun to make a film when you get stuck in a rut. I tried to do something completely different for Hydra. When I have complete freedom of creativity, I try to do something experimental that is not following the existing format itself. When you were making Hydra, um, what was your, yeah, what was the goal with the action design? You had, I mean, it's a very new, I call it, it looks, it looks to me almost unchoreographed. Was that the goal is to make it look like a real fight and Talk talk about what you wanted to do with the action in that film. Yes, that's right. The fights were actually choreographed. I decided to break away from the old-fashioned, perfectly matched actions for this film. I was watching a lot of boxing matches at the time. I found it interesting that they were fighting at a very close distance, using a lot of clinching in boxing matches. I thought that there are not many fight scenes that use clinching. So I decided to make one. I wanted to expand this idea of fighting a little bit. When uh, I think the thing, one of the things that really stuck out for me was when, when punching at a head, usually in movies, when you punch at a head and the head moves, well, naturally, you're not going to punch right at the head. You tend to punch out to the side and the other person moves. There's this big, big gap, right? But in Hydra, it looks like they're punching right at the head and the head is just moving enough to get out of the way. So there's a lot of, a lot of these, a lot of fast hands, just like in boxing. Uh, is that very difficult to perform that? And how do you train that? The shooting itself was not so difficult because we were working with people who are good at action. However, we practiced punches that snatched the head. We intentionally took time to work on that skill. That's dangerous. Did, did that cause injuries sometimes? And how do you, as a performer, that's scary. That's It's difficult. What kind of training? And were there any accidents? There was no accident. I thought about how to throw a safe punch without damaging a person. Let's say this is the head, and you throw a punch at the head. If this person moves even a little bit, you might hit them, right? 
But what we practiced was to touch the target with the wrist first and then get the fist over the head. When you do it fast, it looks like you are punching right at the head. That's how we ensured our safety. Touch the head with your wrist first, then the fist moves over the head. Touch with the wrist, then go over the head. If you do it fast, they can't see this process. Uh, very good. I'll tell you, when we did a... I designed a fight for God of War Ragnarok. It's Kratos versus um, Heimdall. And there's there's a part where Kratos is throwing a lot of punches and Heimdall is slipping. And I was watching your fight as inspiration when we did that fight scene. I'll, I'll send it to you. When did you start using previs for your action scenes? I guess it has been quite a long time. People used previs even before I became an action director. So I guess it has been about 20 years now. And can you tell us about your process when making the previs? Do you shoot it? Do you edit it? What, what, is, your, what is your involvement in the previs? I operate the camera and do the editing myself. Yeah. It's very Hong Kong style for you, or is there a what? What I guess I should ask: What are your filmmaking influences when you are shooting and editing your previs? I think I have been influenced by many things. I think the biggest one is Hong Kong films. And when you shoot a previs, uh, how much? For example, if you're shooting previs for another director's film, a different film. How much of the director's filmmaking style do you use in your previs? It depends on the type of film that I work on. But if it's an action film, I will start with making an action scene and then have the director look at it. If the director wants to change anything, I will change it. Or in the case that the director is an orderist, I first ask their intentions. If there is a specific way of shooting or a way they want the film to be presented, I listen to their requests first and incorporate them into the film. Are you then taking the director's filmmaking style and then you design action for that camera and editing style? I sometimes create actions that resemble the character's personality. So when you work on projects like Manhunt, uh, you did a show called Codename Mirage, uh, and then also uh, Nowhere Man. You're working on you know medium to large scale productions. You're designing action for actors at that point. How do you design action to fit the actors in these movies and TV shows? I first ask about the character. And then create some movements that may suit the character's personality. I propose the movements to the directors by saying, how about these type of movements for this character? If the actor is fine with them too, then I start building the choreography using those movements. And how do you train the actors to do the movements? Because these are, again, you, you have very close, violent combat. Uh, if the actor is not using a stunt double, what is the training process for them? First of all, yes, the punch we talked about can be dangerous. And the fight is in close range. You can hit your partner with the elbow accidentally. So when we teach actors, we focus on those risky moves. We teach those risky moves by actually demonstrating them. What was it like working with Donnie Yen, uh, who obviously he has 
he has the skills to be able to do this. Um, but compared to working with actors, what is it like working with someone like Donnie Yen or Tak Sakaguchi? I would like to mention that I have never actually worked with Donnie. Although I was involved in his film, I was in the Japan unit and he was not in it. So I haven't seen him on set. I think everyone around me has probably worked with him. I am the only one who hasn't. For someone who has their own style like Tak Sakaguchi-san, if I give him something already complete, there will be no room for interesting reactions. A chemistry won't happen. If I give them something that is predetermined, it is the loss of an opportunity for something unexpected to happen. Rather, I like to use what comes out of them and make them more interesting. That way, the fight gets more interesting. With normal actors, I give them choreography after ensuring their safety. But with actors who can do action well, it's different. They propose their ideas and movements to me, then I incorporate their ideas into the fight. When you work with people like um, Saori in uh, Baby Assassins, um, how much of the uh, of the action design comes from her because she's also a very talented performer um what is her input um and what is your process when working with uh, with her i already had known her well because i had used her as a stunt performer in my previous works so i already knew her capabilities and what she was good at when I was designing the choreography, she was there too. I told her, do this or do that, and she responded. That's how the fights were made. I want to go back uh, a little bit in time here and talk about um, The Boy and the Beast, um, about eight years ago now. Uh, what What is, like, how did you design it? action for an anime what was that process exactly did you do previs for that and the animators then use that as reference yes i only did the opening scene of the monster's child when i make an action scene for animated films i shoot the previs in live action first then they make an animation based on that. Do you direct the performers in the previs differently for anime versus live action films, for example? Do you use the like aesthetics of anime within your choreography, within your previs? When I create actions for animations, I use a completely different mindset. There are many movements in animation that cannot be done in live action. So we use various methods to show them in live action, like CG and other methods. When I shoot a previs for animations, I imagine how it would look when it's actually animated. Uh, when you did Resident Evil 3, how did you improve upon the old game? It's a very old game, <laughs> and you make new action for it. Uh, what were you drawing from when you made the action for, uh, for this game? Most of the fight ideas had already been decided, and I was asked to follow their directions. It didn't really feel like a very creative way to participate. Uh, your latest film, Bad City, what was your goal with the action in Bad City? Or I guess as a movie, as a filmmaker, what is your goal uh, with making Bad City?
In terms of action, since it was a crime movie or noir film, we created the action scenes that make you feel pain. I aimed to create fights with a bit of rawness. I did not care if it looked cool or beautiful. If anything, I tried to make the fights unorthodox. It was the theme in terms of action. It was an attempt to shoot an old Yakuza film from a modern perspective. Um, yeah, congratulations on it. It, look, it, looks, it looks great. Uh, the action looks fantastic. Thank you. How much time uh, do you have to do your action scenes? In, because I, I understand that Hydra, you shot very quickly. Uh, did you do you have enough time to do your action scenes and how long does it take you specifically with you know hydra baby assassins and bad city basically we shot an action scene in one day it's really fast <laughs> actually i would love to take more time to shoot but we don't have enough money so it always ends up like this why is it like that? Because if it was, if it was the Hong Kong style, you would get a month, right? In the first place, action films are not that popular in Japan. So it's difficult to raise money for making action films. That's the biggest problem. Even if it's marketed as an action film, the cost is inevitably cut. Even for a larger scale film, it's normal to shoot an action scene in about three days at the most. Even in the very rare case of a major action film like Rurouni Kenshin, I think an action scene was shot in about a week. What do you think needs to change? Is it something about, or is it something about Japanese culture, or is it the business side? And was it always like this? At least when I started in the action industry, there wasn't much demand for action films. I think this situation has been the same for the past 30 years or so. There are many reasons for this, but I think the method of marketing is not good. In Asia, there are a variety of action movies from Hong Kong, Korea, Thailand, etc. Japanese action movies have less presence compared to those countries. Other countries take more time to shoot action scenes. We do our best in the limited schedule, but there is a limit to what we can do. Even for an action-oriented film, we can't spend many days to shoot the action. Under such circumstances, we can't sell the film to the international market, so they stop making action films. There is a vicious cycle. Vicious cycle, yeah. Yeah, but do you have the same limitations when you're doing um, animated films or video games? I don't feel the lack of budget in animated films and games. I feel it the most when working on action films. Where do you think the Japanese action film genre is going and where would you like it to go? I would like to produce Japanese films that can be sold around the world. And increase the number of such films. I think it would be ideal to create an environment that would attract investment for action films. Do you have any side interests, hobbies, 
besides action, besides martial arts, that help you with action design? I have always been good at drawing. So maybe that has helped me in creating action and deciding camera framing. Do you ever integrate drawings into your previs? No, but I have designed weapons that I wanted to use in films. Yeah, your, your weapons are very interesting in your, in your previs, as I've seen. <laughs> I had another question about the Japanese stunt industry. Uh, in Chambara films, was it also the case where, in Chambara films, did they also have such strict time limitations when they were making action scenes? In the past, I feel more time was spent filming. But I can't say anything about that because I haven't actually experienced it myself. But if you look at old period dramas, for example, an action scene was composed with only a few shots. So I don't think they spent that much time on the action scenes. That makes sense. Does Karata-san talk about what the stunt industry was like in Japan when he started? I have not heard so much about that. He talked more about what happened in Hong Kong, but not so much about Japan. My last question, do you have any advice for people in Japan who want to get into the action business? If you are even a little bit interested, try it once. You will see something if you try. If you are not sure whether you want to do it or not, I think you should try it at least once. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It's been uh, a pleasure talking to you. Um, I think that your work is uh, very unique and it's inspiring to a lot of us because we are we are trying to do action like this in America a lot of the time where <clears throat> the action looks uncooperative and you have found this very, <clears throat> very great technique for doing that. Excuse me. So you have, you have figured out a technique, and um, so I congratulate you, and thank you again for talking today. I'm grateful for the questions you asked and the fact that you've been watching my works. Let's keep in touch. Thank you again. Um, I really appreciate it. This has been very educational. Thank you too. Action Talks is available on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. Join my Telegram at t.me slash Eric Jacobus. You can check out my studio at superalloyinteractive.com. My website and blog is at ericjacobus.com. And be sure to subscribe. Thank you.